All right, everyone, welcome back. In our last video, we spoke about some of the underlying statistical transformations which happen to our data when we use uh, certain geom functions in the ggplot2 library. Uh, what's important to note is that we can also apply a stat argument directly to our plot via the aesthetic mappings. So let's say we're interested in getting a bar plot of proportions. We can go and apply that directly uh, to our aesthetic mappings. So just removing this stat argument and into the aesthetic mappings, I'll, I'll have a Y argument and then I'll write stat. And this time stat is a function. And then inside it, I write proportion, right? Probe uh, for short. And for, uh, in order to do this, I'm going to have to add another variable over here and I'm going to write group and I'm going to put in a one there. So running it, we get a plot here that is now in terms of proportion. Uh, so you see over here that uh, the Y axis now is uh, in, in terms of decimals and uh, and our x-axis over here is still grouped together by uh, the classes of, uh, of uh, quality and cut. So what's important to note is that group over here is a dummy variable which overrides the default grouping that uh, the geom bar function had. So in addition to that, we might also want to draw some greater attention to some of the statistical transformations in our data. So for example, in that case, we can use the stat summary function um, to see a summary of our Y values for every unique X value. So instead of using the geom bar uh, function, we write stat summary. And then inside it, we have a mapping. We have a mapping argument where we put in the aesthetic mappings. And in this case, we're gonna go and use uh, the cut and for for us to go and see a summary of, of a statistics for each unique value Let's choose something like depth to so go and get the depth of the, of the diamond and then We'll have uh, for our summary we'll write for the function min We're gonna go and have a minimum and the function max we'll get the maximum and then for the function that we're gonna be actually applying Let's use, we could use the average where we can write the mean or we could just use the median. Hadley uses the median over here. So the ggplot2 provides us with uh, over 20 stats uh, functions that we can use. So to go and see a, a more complete list, of this, uh, you can look at the ggplot2 cheat sheet. I'm gonna link that in the description below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short little video to go and explain a little bit more about the underlying statistical transformations that happen in ggplot. Uh, and uh, I hope you like it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.